Hi, my name is Emily O'Garman, and I'm here to tell you about the things that are going on in the world, because I am a psychoanalysis, and I worked my way all the way up to be able to work with Joe Biden and other people, and it's really cool. So we do a lot of really cool things. We like work around the world, we try to, you know, figure out what's going on around the world that's wrong, and try to actually solve it and our ultimate goal would be to actually solve it so that everybody has a house everybody has food everybody has drugs or cigarettes or whatever they want a goal and that's what they need basically they need the necessities is what we're trying to do they need those necessities <coughs> because a lot of people don't have them and there's foreigners and stuff they're, they're, I'm not playing around, man. There's foreigners, and they don't got no food. They don't got no houses. And I live in the United States, in California, in Eureka. And I'm homeless. Because I had to come up here. And I had to find my, you know, some things, some business things I had to do up here. And then, anyways, I'll tell you more about that a little bit. But anyways, I'm, trying to, I'm in the process of getting a car. So I'm fine with that, but uh, it's, it's just kind of one of those things, you know? You, you fall into homelessness and then all of a sudden you're like, wow, why am I homeless? Like, I would have never thought, like, I wasn't going to be homeless. Like, I was up here and I was, like, trying to figure out what to do with myself. Like, I was, like, trying to find my ex-boyfriend, Jeremiah. His name is Jeremiah Lewis, anyways. I was trying to find him, and I'm an atheist, and our atheist, like, God told me, like, that sounds crazy, you'll learn about it as you go, but, like, our atheist God told me, like, you have to come find your ex-boyfriend, Jeremiah Lewis. I was like, Jeremiah Lewis? Like, I haven't talked to him in a minute. <laughs> but honestly, it's kind of funny, because, like, he's, like, all I ever wanted for, like, a good, like, five years or so but oh my god I'm about to get a car because they took my car when I got up here and I thought that was it for a second I ain't gonna lie <laughs> but no but seriously they took my car and Jeremiah Lewis was in it he should have stole my phone <laughs> no he stole my phone and I was sitting there, and I'm having a good old day, you know, trying to get my job. And he comes in my car, and he says, can I borrow your phone? My mom's on her way. With his, like, puppy dog eyes, he does. Let me see how he does it. And he goes, like, he goes, like, <laughs> he does something, like, <laughs> the fuck was that? Oh. No, he does something. He's like, he like looks that way. <laughs> He's like, can I borrow your phone? <laughs> Meanwhile, like I look for my phone and it's missing. And then they ended up taking my car too. <laughs> so I've been living in the tent. <laughs> And you know what? It wasn't a very nice tent. <laughs> Got a few holes, little dings on the side. It wasn't real inviting if you ask, like, the town. But <laughs> honestly, it works. <laughs> it works if you're cold. <laughs> so, that's Jeremiah Lewis. He's more of, like, a clown figure. <laughs> He's more like a clown. But no, that's not the point. The point is, I'm up here homeless. <laughs> hey, I'm homeless. <laughs> and, and Jeremiah Lewis is my friend still. What I'm here to tell you guys is basically about my skills of what I do. <laughs> and you know what? This sparkle really didn't get off my eye.
Oh no. <laughs> it didn't. <laughs> but that's not the point. I'm up here because I'm a psychoanalysis. <laughs> and you find all these like crazy researchers and they're like, oh my God, like we're all homeless for why? Like we're like smart, man. We're smart people. And there's people up here that, that they've been halfway around the world kind of smart. And they're the ones that got themselves into it. <laughs> Not into it, but they got themselves out. And I'm sitting here homeless with all these people that are brainiacs that don't have any kind of clue how, how to really like, how to, you know, do things that, that really, really a lot of people have, like houses. It's like, man, where'd you come from? <laughs> They're like, I was taken there. But you know what? It's not funny because in reality it happened. So we're trying to find houses for foreigners. <laughs> we're trying to find houses for foreigners and for homeless people. Because most of the homeless people out here, and homeless people in general, they're smart, man. They're really, really, really smart. And they do like top quality like researchers and things like that. And then they like feed on their like depression levels and their homelessness just like desperation. And it's horrible. It's really bad. Cause like people they're they're around and they're always stirring up all this drama. It's like can't you just like let me live in a house and be so happy to be alive? <laughs> can't you just let me be happy to be alive? But they they have to like screw with that too. Like, oh, you had a hundred dollars today? We're gonna turn that into like, give or take, decline. It's like, come on. Like, I didn't even have a bite to eat today. Some days, it happened. <laughs> no, it doesn't. But anyways, I'll give you some chip tips. Some chips. That would have been nice. But no, I'll give you some tips and tricks on how to get out of homelessness, really. You have to like you have to like go around and you have to like make sure people can give you hamburgers and things like that and fries. It's supposed to give you fries. They give you fries. But anyways, so I'm an atheist. And our atheist God told me to come up here and find Jeremiah Lewis. I found him a few times. But he's so sketched out by all this, he doesn't even know what's going on half the time. But really, I do because I'm like I'm like way up there in my knowledge of like psychoanalysis is like basically you could figure out anything that you ever needed to figure out. It's just we're constantly being thrown in circles and circles and circles and circles about like what's going on. A lot of people don't really know what's going on. And so we're trying to get that out. It's it's a lot of a, uh, you know, what this girl says, well, you know, it's because why did you show up? Why are you here? Why are you getting all this like, this name and publicity or whatever and all this stuff, it's like, Okay, well, why are you here then? Because I know something about you, and you're not, you're not, you're not, you're not anywhere near this skill. Like you should be fired by somebody like me, or like, you know what I'm saying? Because I have that capability. I could fire some people. But that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to get to the bottom of why the why there's homelessness, and why there's a bunch of really smart people homeless. Like really smart people homeless. It's increasingly becoming more and more and more like worse and bad and more people are become, becoming homeless. And then why are there foreigners that only have like bread to eat and things like that? Like they don't have a lot of food. They don't have like, you know, so people don't, they don't have houses. Like, you know, you go in there and it just looks like, you know, it looks like a cement kind of building. The window, they don't really have windows or doors or things like that. And it's really sad. It's like something that people might like, you know, try to break into here, you know, and try to like maybe, maybe start a fire if it'd be warm enough. I don't know, but, but yeah. So it's like, we're trying to be, make sure all the foreigners and all that stuff because I'm in the US, we're trying to make sure they all come over here and have a big old, big, big old party with us. That's what I'm trying to do, that's my goal. Cause I'm trying to make sure, you know, 
like I said, we have all the necessities, the things we need. That's really the basics of what human human existence is supposed to be. It's supposed to be excitement that you're alive and um, bettering bettering your, your self-reflection of kind of who you are, where you've been, and kind of gathering all that information to be able to, you know, let go of things and then informing the youth, informing all of the youth and the teenagers and stuff how to react in certain situations and all that kind of stuff, which is what I'm really good at. And then, um, too, and then uh, make, making sure you can help them, you know, overcome mistakes, but also prevent them by showing them, like, the truth. Because a lot of people, they don't open up, like parents, they don't open up about like what they did in the past and things like that and you know and kids are sitting here stewing over like you know I can't even talk to my parent they're, they're strict they're scary and I'm like if you can't talk to your parent I go in there I try to figure out like okay so what would we do with a teenager that can't talk to their parents either a not good parent or there's something else going on and sometimes it's like lack of communication the 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 teenager doesn't really realize that they could talk to their parent and their parent is just sitting there laughing because they're like, your problems don't look as scary as they may seem, but I don't know how to like open up to you. And then, you know, and then the parent and then the kid, like once you, once they realize that and they're like, man, that's, that's a real person. You just like grow in who you are and, and what you know and realize and who you trust and, you know, the information you, you start to gather to try to you start your own opinions over kind of who you are and, and, and what you want to do with, you know, with that information that you have to ultimately become a, a more well-rounded or happier human that's like growing and not in the dark or confused about any type of situation that you could come in by. And then, and then there's some parents that are just not good parents. And there's always a root to it. That's the thing, like, as a psychoanalysis, there's always a root to everything. Even though, it, like, sometimes you have to spin in circles excuse me and it's hard it's hard to spin in circles because some people are like oh well here's the root oh no it's not here's the root and you're just like I don't care what you're going on in your life I want to help you but honestly like you're just distracting yourself from what you're supposed to be doing which is growing up and that's not to the teens or kids or preteens something like that but when you're like well in your 20s and going on 30s and you're just stirring up other drama for other people just to distract yourself from what it is you're supposed to be doing among looking like something that's like actually what I call like detrimental to society which is kind of saying like your profession and you're you're using things in your profession that you're not supposed to be even using because you're not qualified you don't know that level of sophistication yet and they they assume that you know that they could distract themselves by gearing it on other people and stuff like that instead of Instead of like sitting down and saying, hey, can you please help me? I'm stuck in life. I don't know what to do. I don't feel nice about myself. Things like that. And, and then they make it a big like worldly thing that, you know, people don't realize is really going on, which is kind of why I'm here too. Kind of to show people like kind of what's going on. You know, show people like what's going on. <laughs> Okay, show people what's really going on and trying to figure out, you know, what to do with the situations that they need to do so that we could get all the situation handled. Because there's people with insecurities, there's people with like, you know, that, that hurt themselves sometimes or want to hurt other people. There's people that like, you know, they, let's see, you know, they, they don't feel like they have creativity. There's people that were abused. A lot of people were abused. Uh, people that were didn't have food or you know drinks or houses or warmth or parents or they're homeless and their teens or their kids or they're like they feel stuck they feel like I'm on the opposite opposite side of the world I don't know what to do with my life my friends aren't coming through my family ain't coming through stuff like that so there's a lot of problems going on and and it's more like worldwide kind of things that are really happening so we're trying to get to the bottom of it I'm trying to you know let you guys know everything and then help with the techniques I have for psychoanalysis which is basically all these kinds of therapy techniques not really therapy but techniques of really kind of like help with anxiety stressors talking to people talking to parents professional type stuff gearing up for jobs and all that kind of stuff what you would need for that and then um kids if you're gonna have kids if you've ever lost someone just just different things like that that I can help kind of help make you you know 
you know, see it from a different perspective and try to really try to really get in there and dig deep because a lot of people have the same kind of trauma and different things like that and that's something I really specialize in helping people get to the root of those things but also just living a happier life happier guiltier I mean guilt free more guilt free happier lifestyle and it, it's a actually a worldly kind of other things that are going on that are contributing to people the PTSD and where it comes from subliminal messaging and kind of just kind of your, your atmosphere around you. So that's kind of what I'm about and what I like to do. And I really want to share that with you guys because I, I know it's going to help a lot of people. And so uh, that, you know, getting everybody healthy, cured, confident, you know, um, all those kinds of things. And then among all the resources and things like that, that they're going to be able to need in this like upcoming years and and make sure everybody kind of has a good time and a good life and happy and doing all the things music and talent and all the kinds of things that come with it and uh you know with age and the more you're aware and the more it goes just the more happier it gets as far as that creativity and those talents and the ability to want to do stuff like that so anyways i wanted to i just wanted to introduce myself my name is emily marissa o'gorman you just call me Emily or Emily Marissa O'Gorman. You can call me whatever you want. Emily, Emily Marissa, Emily O'Gorman. But yeah, so that's kind of one of these things. I'm at in and out late. It's like almost one. I mean, it close at one. So I'm going to hang out in here and then go find my tents and try to see if my blankets are dry. But, uh, but yeah, sometimes they let me in the mall and just shop around. There's a lot of things going on at the mall, man. The world is changing. It's very strange. But we're going to get through it, and we're going to get through it together, and I'm going to teach you everything that I know about it so that it makes sense so you can see it from a different eye, different perspective. And then if you ever want to, like, talk or anything like that, uh, you, you know, definitely I'm going to try to figure out a way to put that in there. So Emily O'Gorman on Facebook. Uh, I have so many of them. I can't even get into all of them because the passwords, it seems like they're always changing or, like, misplaced. I don't know what they are. But anyways, so I've been trying to find a way to, you know, if you if you want to get a hold of me, it's a uh, Emily O'Gorman or Emily Marissa O'Gorman on Facebook, and I forgot which one it is. I forgot which one it is of of my face, and then the other one is uh, M. Is it so ugly? You let it slip. So saw something you let it slip on Instagram. I don't remember what it is. I just, I just kind of started on Instagram again. So, um, anyways, so I, I will, I will let you guys know what that is. But I, I'm gonna explain everything so it all makes sense. It all makes sense. It's totally cool. It's just there's a lot to it. Amongst it's, it's a lot of medical stuff. A lot of medical stuff. So it's, it's really cool and uh, really fun to learn and. Uh, I mean, like, it's, it's cool to learn stuff about what's going on around the world and how people are affected by it worldwide and what we're doing to, to kind of just help out the situation and all the fun stuff that we found out in between, which is crazy. Like, you know, we've met some clairvoyants, things like that. Crazy things that are just totally fun. I say fun, I feel like it's like a big, like, carnival. It's not a carnival, but it's, it's a lot of figuring out this step this 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 goes here this goes here sometimes we go in a circle and we're like, okay well but well, now we know all that but so anyways i want to share that with you guys anyways uh it's it's nice to talk to you and i hope that that you guys have a really really good uh upcoming holidays and all that kind of stuff stay warm stay close to something safe you know if something's going on or something um Try, try to get to the bottom of it, but try to move swiftly, you know, you want to stay safe. You don't want to be stuck in homelessness, man. Homelessness sucks. It sucks so bad. There's all of us, we're smart, we're trying to get out of here, man. We're, we don't want to be stuck in here, man. So anyways, uh, try to stay safe, try to get food, all that kind of stuff. Stick with your friends that are good friends. Uh, don't be too trusting sometimes, you know, be weary if you have certain feelings. Try to talk about it to someone or bring them up about people. You just never know, you know, who's around. But always just try to keep safe and, and just, you know, the more confidence you have, the more you're, and the more awareness, the more you're going to be able to, you know, breeze through this whole thing and, and make other people aware and all that kind of stuff. It is just, we all kind of stick together at that point, you know, we stick together, we're all going to be fine. It's just people, 
uh, they're kind of like, we feel left out or we don't know what's going on, stuff like that. So it's kind of one of those things where it's going to be good to, to just get that awareness out for people and then um, kind of the advice to kind of go there. Uh, encourage me. I always encourage our, you know, our girls and our guys that they're going through a lot of changes right now and it's it's really cool and, and a lot of girls, you know, they got insecurity issues now. Sometimes it's hard, but honestly, we're going to work through them because it's just a matter of seeing it from a different perspective. It's like, why? You don't have to live up to a standard. Live up to your best, most comfortable self. And that's what guys are going through too. They're just like realizing like, I'm not happy. It's like, okay, well... The more comfortable you are in your skin, that's the number one rule to just being happy, safe, comfortable. Be comfortable in your skin, and then um, guys and girls, all ages, you know, if somebody's stressing you out, it could just be like a t-shirt that you just feel not right in. You know what I'm saying? So just find the most beautiful thing you've ever picked out and, and wear that and just wear the heck out of it. No matter who's around, you know, if that makes you feel beautiful and comfortable, where guys and girls that's my best piece of advice so far so i'll see you all later i mean i'm gonna make another video but uh after a while i'll talk to you all later it's good to talk to you and hopefully you know good to meet you guys and uh, i'll keep keep this update and everything from eureka california talk to you later guys have a good night all right good night bye Emily. <laughs>